Jamie said, all these vids are awesome, thank you. Do you think you could do a vid on floating text, like how this game does it? Sure, I'll link the reference game in the description below, as well as the source code. In the given example, the pop-up text seems to have some sort of gravity to it, and fades out over time. This behaviour is quite similar to how I implemented arrow movement. I've set up a simple scene with a button that creates floating text. When the button is clicked, it creates a new floating text scene. Let's have a look at that. The floating text scene has a label node and a tween node. The label displays the text. It's possible to change the font and the size of the text by heading to the right under Custom Fonts. If you want to change the font, load your font file in the font data property. In this example, the font file extension is .otf. Another common extension is .ttf. Size and other options, such as adding an outline, are found in settings above. To see what the tween node does, we'll dive into the floating text script. We've set a reference on ready variable of the tween node. We've also got some variables that will affect the floating text position, as well as a set get for setting and getting the text. The ready function is called as soon as the scene enters the scene tree. It's here we instruct our tween node to fade out and scale the scene. This instruction orders the tween node to fade the scene out, starting from its modulate, or color. The effect lasts 0.3 seconds and is fired after a delay of 0.7 seconds. Explaining the arguments between these values is a little beyond the scope of this video, but I touched on easing in and easing out on my bouncing ball tutorial. What a sentence. Basically, these values determine how one value moves to another. The next set of instructions is all about scaling the text. First, we scale up the text over 0.3 seconds. Note there's zero delay on this instruction, and so I've removed that argument. After 0.6 seconds, the text begins scaling down to a factor of 0.4. Finally, the tween is instructed to fire off the destroy method after one second has passed. This is after the floating text alpha is zero, and so is not visible. All of these instructions begin when the tween.start method is called. As you can see, the tween node is quite versatile. The only thing to manage now is the position. I've done this in the process function because I want to simulate some basic physics. I'd like to invite you to check out my arrow tutorial for a more in-depth explanation of these terms. Let's take a look at what happens when a floating text is created. First, we instance the scene. We can then alter a few variables. Here, I've set the position to be in the center of the screen. I've also set a random starting velocity. And finally, I've set a random color, or modulate. This line creates a random integer between minus five and five. I set the text, and if the amount is greater than zero, I've added a plus sign at the beginning, so that's consistent with the given example. All we need to do now is add it to the scene, and we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to like or dislike the video, and if you have any other questions, please comment below. Cheers!